Hi guys! Over the last year I've made decent progress here on the interior of Athena and with only six months to go until we untie the lines and start cruising full time, it's well definitely time to start looking at the forward cabin. If you're new to this channel let's just get you caught up real quick. I purchased Athena four years ago in Scotland and ever since then I've been busy fixing things, complete with gutting most of the interior of the boat, rebuilding most of the interior of the boat, a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder and a ton of other stuff that's documented right here on YouTube. My fiance Ava and I want to start cruising full time in about six months and these are all the tasks that needs to be completed before the boat is ready for that. This week I am gonna get started on building a clothing locker in the forward cabin, installing wooden slats in the v-berth and insulating the hull in the V-Birth. This is the forward cabin. You guys haven't really been in here a whole lot because as you can see most of it is original. And this area over here is where the giant clothing locker is gonna be. To give you guys a better idea of the layout in here let's bust out the wide angle lens on my iPhone. So up here is the V-Birth. Next to the V-Birth is this big open space here where the old head used to be. This is going to turn into a freezer and then some storage back there up against the hull. Next to that is the washing machine, the dryer, and then over here where this vanity is is where that giant clothing locker is going to be. And then there's a small little sitting area here. As you can see, the forward cabin is pretty big for a 38 foot boat. Now, I personally really like this little vanity here, but it is kind of a waste of space. The first order of business is to tear out the old vanity and also to open up this space over here so I know how much space I've got to work with. Just one application of Vanity Be Gone really opened up the space. Last night I swung by the workshop and picked up two pieces of plywood. These are going to be the sides of the drawer section in the clothing locker. I'm sorry about the horrible lighting in here. Maybe next week I'll see if I can put up some lighting over the V-Birth. That should make it easier to shoot video in here. But the plan is to have three sections to the clothing locker. There's going to be a drawer section right here where I'm standing now. Then next to that is going to be a hanging locker section. And then up against the side of the hull is going to be shelves for long-term storage. The astute will have noted that to get access to the long-term storage area, you're going to have to go through the hanging section of the locker. But I think that's okay because the long-term storage area is just for summer clothes during the winter and for winter clothes during the summer. I've cut a new piece of cabin sole to replace the old piece because, well, there's a section missing there. So next up, let's take a stab at the two sides for the drawer section. It's super important that these two pieces of plywood are going to be parallel. Otherwise, I'm going to run into issues with the drawer slides. If I was building this at a house or somewhere where everything was nice and square relative to each other, then I would have built a giant box up at the workshop and just popped that in here to house the drawers. That would have been easier. But the compression post here is not at 90 degrees to the cabin sole nor is it at 90 degrees to this bulkhead. So yeah, I'd end up with kind of weird spaces in between everything. So that is why I'm doing it this way, which is no doubt gonna be a little bit more difficult. Here I've got the rough measurements for the height. So let's go ahead and cut some plywood. Having a track like this for the circular saw with this little bit of rubber out here makes it so easy to cut stuff. If you're going to be doing any kind of work aboard a boat that involves cutting plywood, I highly recommend you pick up something like this. It doesn't have to be the Bosch. I know a lot of the other brands have something very, very similar. That looks like a pretty good fit. I'm going to have to trim this a little bit because right now it's leaning forward by about two degrees. So I'm going to use the compression post and the main bulkhead as my point of reference for what's plumb. That's another cool thing about these tracks. You can combine them. So I've got two shorter ones, but combined, they're long enough for anything I would ever need to cut here aboard the boat. After everybody's favorite, a little bit of oh glorious sanding and some general fiddling about, I've now got the two sides 
of the drawer section mounted in place. I've made absolutely sure that the two sides are parallel and also plumb relative to each other. In any kind of C-state, we're gonna be very likely to bump against this. So of course, it's very important that the drawer section is nice and sturdy. And as you might be able to see, this plywood does flex quite a bit. To stiffen up the drawer section and also to give the latches on the drawer front something to grab onto, I'm gonna be adding a bunch of little uh, shelves. Just to give you guys an idea of what the finished result is gonna look like, the drawer fronts and also the latches are gonna be basically identical to the ones here in the galley. Ava and I spent a bit of time going over the layout of the clothing locker, in particularly the height of the drawers. She would like there to be at least six inches of space from the bottom of the drawer box up to the next shelf. So I'm gonna make the separation between each of my little shelves seven inches. Once I've subtracted the little bit of an air gap that's gonna be underneath each of the drawer boxes, as well as the thickness of the bottom of the drawer box, this should give me a clearance of about six and a half inches. These two little pieces of scrap plywood here is simply just jigs to make sure that the spacing remains consistent between each of the little shelves. To support the shelves, I need eight sets of two of these little pieces of larch. This video is proudly sponsored by my screw pusher. No, not really, but as you can see, I've gone a little bit overboard on the amount of screws. Now I can use my little spacers here to make absolutely sure that the spacing between each of the shelves remain nice and consistent. A ton of screws and a little dab of epoxy thickened with 406 should plant us firmly in overkill territory. For each of the little supports I put in place, I just checked real quick to see that it was still square with the front of the locker, just to make sure I wasn't introducing any kind of compounding error. But uh, let's go ahead and get the shelves in place. The shelves get secured to the side of the locker, but also to the bulkhead. That's what's gonna make sure that this is crazy strong when all of the shelves are in place. By strong, I'm referring to the side of the locker. As you can see, it's already stiffened up a lot. So yeah, this is gonna be very strong. Ta-da! All of the shelves are now in place. I'll blast the heat in here overnight to help the epoxy cure, and then maybe tomorrow I can get started on the drawer boxes. Good morning, guys. As you might be able to tell, there's a good reason why I cranked the heat in the forward cabin last night. It's gotten a little bit nippy. That's kind of cool. If you look at the cabin tub, you can very clearly see how much of the cabin tub I've insulated. There, there is no frost. In the forward part, there's frost. And you might even also be able to see the little laminated beams that run across the cabin top. This is probably my favorite time of year. It's just so beautiful. Yes, it's cold. As you can see, the water has started to freeze here in the marina, but it is really beautiful. I've been living aboard Obelix for the past six winters, and every year I tend to get the same questions. Isn't it cold? And doesn't the ice damage the hull? It's not cold, you just have to have some heat on inside of the boat, and the ice doesn't damage the hull because the ice here inside of the marina is stationary. It just kind of sits there and does nothing. Let me grab the last bit of plywood up in the car and we can head down below. Last night I spent a few hours up at the workshop cutting all of the plywood for the drawer boxes. Here is the bottom, here's the front and the back, and here are the sides. When I ordered the plywood for the drawer boxes, I got tempted and I skimped out a little bit. Let's all say together, friends don't let friends buy cheap plywood. The piece of plywood that's on top here is the stuff I normally use. It's really good quality, nice plywood. It's a bit expensive. This stuff down here is about half the price, but as you can see, there are voids in here and there are also fewer layers. The glue that's used in the cheap plywood should be the same that's used in the expensive stuff. I made sure of that, but yeah, there's a pretty big difference in quality. The voids in the cheaper plywood is not the end of the world because the door boxes are gonna get painted. So I can simply just fill the voids with a little bit of polyester putty and you won't be able to see them but it is an additional step that I wouldn't have had to do if I'd used the stuff I normally use. Going with the cheaper plywood to save 60 bucks might not have been the best idea, but I'm stuck with it now, so let's just all remember, friends don't let friends buy cheap 
plywood. If I haven't messed this up, the drawer boxes should be fairly easy to put together. That's a pretty nice test fit. I'm gonna use thickened epoxy to glue everything together. And because thickened epoxy doesn't require any clamping force, I'm just gonna use a little bit of yellow tape to hold everything together until the epoxy cures. This is just a quick little dry fit, nothing is glued yet. I just wanted to make sure that the drawer boxes actually fit before I start mixing up any epoxy. And I'm happy with this, so let's get to gluing. I think if you take a look in the dictionary under the word tedious, there might actually be a picture of a bunch of drawer boxes. That little time lapse represents about four hours worth of work. But at least now I've got eight perfect little drawer boxes. As you can see, I've used some zip ties in between the boxes. That's just to make sure they don't stick to each other when the epoxy cures. This is a lot of storage for clothing. And remember, there's also the hanging section and the long-term storage section. So I think Ava will be very pleased. Now let's move on to something completely different. I'll get back to the drawer boxes tomorrow once the epoxy has cured enough that I can do a test fit with the drawer slides. But for now, let's move on to something completely different. I want to connect this NMEA 2000 engine gateway. Long story short, I need the RPMs from the engine for the external regulator for the ginormous alternator that's gonna charge the lithium batteries. Speaking of the lithium batteries, 7.2 kilowatt hours worth of lithium batteries are supposed to leave China sometime next week. And then they're supposed to arrive here aboard Athena in about six to seven weeks. So that'll be very exciting. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get back to this little guy. Yacht Devices offers a whole bunch of little cool Enemy 2000 sensors and gadgets. An example would be the engine gateway. They also have a digital thermometer. There's also a barometer and a whole bunch of other little doodads. And they're pretty reasonably priced. I believe they offer a couple of different versions of engine gateways. Of course, you need to make sure you get one that's actually compatible with your engine. And also your engine can't be super old. Like for instance, the engine aboard Oblix, which is from 73. Well, there's gonna be no engine gateway for that. There's the doohickey itself, a little manual, a plug of some sort, and some stickers. It's been a few years since I purchased this thing. And when I did, I read the manual. And I'm pretty sure these little stickers are to cover up the back of it. And there's a slot here for an SD card. I believe that is for configuring the device. But uh, yeah, let me just uh, consult the manual before I do anything else. So far, this seems pretty straightforward. I also now know what this little plug does. If you've got a broken tachometer and you want to replace it with just this little device instead of buying a new super expensive Volvo tachometer, well, then you can just plug this into the one open connection on this and you should be good to go. The only thing I don't know is if there's already a default configuration on this or if I'm required to actually upload a configuration to this before it'll work, but uh, we'll find out. I'm going to connect the engine gateway and the little thermometer at the same time, but it's very cramped in there. So I can't really show you guys what I'm doing. I've connected both of the two doohickeys out in the cramped quarters of the man cave. Those are then connected through this cable to this guy up here, which is connected to the DMI 20 displays. Also the VHF radio, there's power for the NMA 2000 network. And then this guy is connected to this guy, which is connected to the chart plotter. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to go off on a quick little tangent because for me to be able to power the NMA 2000 network while having this be closed, I need to route power to the two distribution panels. This is gonna be 24 volts and this is gonna be 12 volts. For now, both of them are gonna be 12 volts because I don't have the lithium batteries yet. So yeah, for now, just a temporary setup. Even though it is temporary, I might as well go ahead and add some fuses just to give myself peace of mind. I will run the same gauge of wire to both panels, even though one is 24 and one is 12 volts 
because the 12 volt one is not really going to see any kind of significant loads. The 12 volt is going to be fused at 60 amps and the 24 volts is going to be fused at 100 amps. That should be perfectly fine. And yes, no need to comment about it. I know some people prefer soldering these. I like crimping. I'm going to add heat shrink to these once I have the lithium batteries and I'm sure the cables are the correct length. Two sets of cables. Done. Now, if you're wondering why I'm cheating and hooking everything up to 12 volt right now, it's simply just because I'm a little bit lazy. I don't want to have to move a bunch of stuff around once I have 24 volts. Both panels are connected. And like I said, this is a temporary setup. So this is not done, but yeah, it's good enough for now. Almost there. Just a few more connections and we should be ready to power up the NMA 2000 network. One thing is clear, I need a little dedicated light inside of this area. That would be very useful. This is the power for the NMA 2000 network. It runs up behind here, comes down here, is fused to the 3 amp fuse, continues down here and connects up to the 12 volt panel. Let's cross our fingers. When I flip this, the display should come on. Ta-da! That is the temperature out in the engine compartment. That's where I added that little thermometer. And I've also gone ahead and hooked up the backlight on the distribution panel. There's no engine information on the network yet, which makes perfect sense because I don't have power to the engine yet. But uh, let's get that hooked up and see if we get any kind of information. Well, I think something might be working. Feast your eyes on the displays of the GMI 20s. Engine data detected. That is a good sign. Would you like to enter the full throttle RPM of the engine? Uh, sure. It looks like we're sitting at 800, 850 RPM right now. So I'll go give it a little bit of throttle and we'll see if this number changes. I've set up a page on the GMI 20 where I'm displaying all the information I think I can get. There's voltage, engine hours, RPM and engine temperature. Pretty cool. Not only did I get the NMA 2000 network hooked up last night, I also hooked up the light here in the saloon. Lights on, lights off, lights on. What would be really cool for the lighting is digital switching. I found a couple of cool products that I'm looking into, but for now, just being able to turn the lights on and off here on the distribution panel is perfectly fine. It'll take multiple days for the epoxy to fully cure, but I think we're certainly at a stage where I can go ahead and do a little test fit with the drawer slides. I've got this big box of drawer slides. There should be eight sets in here. Yep, eight sets of two. Let's go ahead and get this mounted. Now this should just slide on in there. Nice. Look at that. I've only got drawer slides on that one drawer for now, but that's fine. All of them should be identical, so they should fit. I've just stored them in here to free up a bit of space out in the saloon. Next week, I should be able to put up shelves in the long term storage area and some kind of opening for a door here. And then the clothing locker is ready for primer and paint. While this video is rendering, I'm going to make a run to the recycling center and get rid of all of the remnants of the old vanity. I didn't get to start the V-Birth this week because it was too cold, but it looks like there's going to be a couple of warmer days next week where I should be able to epoxy stuff to the inside of the hull. So next week I can get started on the V-Birth, finish the clothing locker and um, well, well, they'll throw in a little bit of fun too. I like the idea of mixing the content in the videos a little bit. So for instance, this week there was some woodworking and some electronic stuff. I think that keeps it a little bit more interesting. So next week I'm gonna continue working on the forward cabin, but we could also maybe fire up the chart plotter. That would be kind of cool. So far, I think I'm still on track to be able to move into the forward cabin in the next two months, month and a half maybe. So that's certainly exciting. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.